Hi, and welcome to this webinar on how to pick a good quality wine for not so much money using the Oracle Autonomous Database, the Oracle Machine Learning Algorithms that are embedded in the database, and the Oracle Application Express, which also comes with the Autonomous Database. Hi, my name is Charlie Berger. I'm the Senior Director of Product Management for Machine Learning AI and Cognitive Analytics, and I'm joined for this adventure with David Peake, who's the Product Manager for Oracle Application Express. And what's interesting is David hails from Australia, so as we try to go pick a good wine, I'm sure David's going to have some opinions. So let's go uh, get on with this. So the main point is that with Oracle, we move the algorithms, not the data. As you get larger and larger amounts of data and you're trying to find patterns in that data, uh, it, sometimes it just makes no sense to pull the data out and move it over to some legacy, I'll call it, type of application like Python or R or SAS or SPSS, that to move the data out of a relational database to somewhere else to do the machine learning, if the database can do the machine learning, which at Oracle it can, it makes no sense. So what Oracle have been doing for a number of years now is uh, uh, doing this journey of embedding uh, traditional and cutting edge machine learning algorithms deep inside the kernel of the Oracle database and their peer functionality to all the rest of the database capabilities. So they're parallelized, they honor all security and scalability and privileges and all that. They are just very, very powerful um, SQL queries, if you will, although they're certainly very, very uh, analytical, powerful SQL queries. So we're gonna use um, all of those capabilities combined with Oracle Application Express to solve a fun, simple problem. And the idea here is we have a bunch of wine review data. It actually, um, I got it off of a Kaggle, Tech Kaggle, it had a competition on it. And we're gonna try to find a very good quality wine, but we don't wanna pay too much. So in wine data, oftentimes the bottles of wine are reviewed by say Wine Spectator, and they get point scales between, I don't know, 75 up to 100, I suppose. And you're looking for a good bottle of wine with say 90 points and above, but you don't wanna spend too much, right? Because in the scenario, we're maybe going to a party, we, we wanna bring a gift, we, we don't know these people that well, so we don't wanna to spend too much money for a really expensive bottle of wine. We just wanna show up with a bottle of wine that says, okay, this is some sort of Grenache wine from, and it has a pretty label on it. Looks good, Charlie, thank you. And, and that's what we wanna try and do, see if we can use some predictive modeling to, to find us a you know, seemingly good bottle of wine, but not pay too much. And of course, Oracle always requires uh, the safe harbor statement that says the following is intended for a general outline, not any commitment to any kind of uh, features or functions on any kind of timetable. And if you'd like, you can follow uh, David and I on Twitter at Charlie Data Mine and Oracle uh, DPeak. Um, feel free to do that. And so to summarize the scenario here, we're gonna try and find a good bottle of wine or we say under $30 here, we wanna go as, as cheap as we can, so it all depends. We might have to pay, pay some more, uh, we'll see. Using app, uh, Oracle Autonomous Database, the machine learning algorithms that are embedded in that, uh, Oracle Application Express. From time to time I show this where you can also review the results in uh, the Oracle Analytics Cloud, that's another option, but we're not gonna cover that now. And of course, when we're done with this, it'd be nice to maybe deploy this whole uh, predictive model uh, as, a, as an application, maybe on a droid or something like that. So at the end, David's gonna also show uh, how you can run some uh, REST uh, API service to do that. The scenario is very simple. We're gonna, um, we've already ex imported the data. I've used SQL Developer to just do the importing the data. Uh, you can also use Oracle Application Express to do that. We explore the data. Um, I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing that. If you're doing this on premise, you would use SQL Developer and the Oracle Data Miner drag and drop GUI. If you're on the cloud with the autonomous databases, you would use the new Oracle Machine Learning Notebooks. So I'll show you briefly how to do both of those. Once we've left our, built our predictive models and made our predictions and left our results inside the database, we're gonna leave them there and David's gonna come back in and peruse those uh, predictions, try to find us a good bottle of wine for not so expensive and maybe build some nice apps uh, with that using autonomous, using the Application Express and uh, the REST API services. And so in the Oracle database, there are a wide a range, uh, an extensive library of um, machine learning uh, algorithms. So uh, there are different types of machine learning techniques that you might do. In the upper left, we see classification models where you're trying to, in this case, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and you know, predict a bottle of wine as to, you know, to be either greater than 90 points or less than 90 points. So it is a numerical value from 75 roughly up to 100, but We've, we've binned that into above 90 points and below 90 points, thus 
positioning the, the, the machine learning problem into a classification type of problem. We're going to classify the model, the, the, the wine bottles as either good or bad, essentially. If we were trying to predict the numerical value at the top, you'd see regression. Um, on the left-hand side, again, in the left column, you see clustering where we could be doing unsupervised learning to try and find natural uh, groupings of wine, let's say all the uh, um, all the uh, uh, Petit Syrahs over here, all the Cabernets over there, and so on. Uh, and there's three different types of algorithms there, and so on. So there's a number of different algorithms that we uh, offer. We also, because with data science, not everyone always speaks the same language. Some people speak R, some people speak Python. Uh, at their core, these machine learning functions are SQL functions inside the database. So what we do is we also wrap and expose and integrate those 30 plus algorithms to other languages like R, uh, and as I record this in February or, or March timeframe, Python. So that will be coming also just a little bit later on this spring, uh, the integration with Python. So if you speak Python or R and you want to run these same algorithms, you can speak Python or R. Or of course, uh, if you speak SQL, that's what we're going to be focused on uh, mostly here, the native tongue of SQL to run these algorithms. Also, these algorithms are not just sort of your standard machine learning algorithms. Uh, I think the uh, text at the bottom is some of the most powerful uh, attributes of these algorithms. They are totally in database SQL functions. And so if you build a model, let's say who's going to vote for the Republican versus Democratic candidate, and you say, well, I'd like to partition the models. I'd like to partition the models by state. Um, I can launch 50 different models. If I say partition by state and gender, uh, it'll launch 100 different machine learning models, um, all using the partition by clause of SQL. If I have transactional data, like what are the items I place in my basket uh, on a website or in Walmart, or what are the um, what are the medications that I'm on? And if let's say I have a number of opioids and I have uh, 400 opioids and the population average is four, I can add in a uh, take take uh, advantage of all that transactional data and compute a new variable that might say Charlie's taken 100 times more opioids than anyone else, and maybe that might indicate some anomalistic uh, behavior or maybe possibly some fraud. So I can use uh, transactional data, aggregations, I can use unstructured data and leverage the oracle text capabilities of the database for uh, taking the unstructured data and, and, and it supports like 26 different languages. I can tokenize all that data and bring in a vector of terms. So if I say the word inexpensive or cheap or white wine or, or uh, whatever uh, words, uh, and those are in the reviews, I'll show you that in a second. I can also ingest and mine uh, data that is both structured and, and unstructured data all combined. So they are, they are not sort of your classical, simple machine learning algorithms. They are in database implementations of machine learning algorithms that leverage all the other vast array of functionality that is currently available in the Oracle converged databases. And of course, there are a number of basic statistical functions as well for doing descriptive statistics, hypothesis testing, Perhaps I want to do a t-test or an f-test or a Kolmogorov-Smirnov test or so on. I can do a Pearson's correlation. All of these are, are additional um, statistical functions that, that, that over the years we just keep on adding more and more you know, to the basic analytical functions like lead and lag and SQL patterns. We just keep on adding more and more analytical functions, making the database much more of a powerful uh, date, both data management but also hybrid combined analytical platform. And so when we do this machine learning inside uh, the database, uh, if you're using the native, going directly to the native SQL APIs, it's very straightforward, right? Um, if you can read the uh, a little bit of SQL here, I have begin DBMS data mining, create model. The model name would be wine class model. The mining function, is it's not gonna be regression or anomaly detection or whatever, or clustering, it's gonna be classification. As I said in the beginning, we're trying to classify our wines as either above 90 points or below 90 points. The input data is gonna be wine train data. The uh, case ID column is gonna be ID, point, bin, point spin is gonna be the target field and I have the wine build settings. So now I'm gonna build a model. It's gonna run very, very quickly, just a few seconds, uh, maybe a minute or two inside the database. Once that model exists, the model is a first class object in the database. I can see who's using it, who's, who's, who's attempted to uh, access that, who has the privs to use it and I can score any table of data or any single record on the fly using, as I'm showing here, dual. So it's very, very powerful when you move the algorithms into the, the database. Now I have a few different slides here that sort of show how you would do this 
using Oracle Data Miner, and then I'm going to show how to do this with Oracle Machine Learning Notebooks. There are this sort of two different ways we can do this. Right now, I have a few different slides here that show how to go about doing this using the Oracle um, Data Miner drag and drop GUI. And but what I'm going to do is, is kind of cut over here to the live product for a minute, so you can make this a little bit more exciting. And I'm going to go down to here and say, let's let's try to pick a good wine. Now, first of all, I am, as I said, using SQL Developer, and the Oracle Data Miner is just an extension to SQL Developer. So in order to see it, you go up here to say Data Miner, you say uh, Make Visible if it weren't already visible, and I have my SQL connections, and I have my Data Miner connections, I have projects, and I have workflows, and I'm looking at this one workflow here for picking a good wine. And the way I started out was by picking a data source, and I picked uh, this wine data source I had down here somewhere, um, somewhere down here, wine ratings data. And I've already brought that in, so I'm going to get rid of this right now, cut. And here's my data. And it, uh, it's just, just, you know, I'm looking at a table of data or a view inside the database. There's the SQL to do that. Um, and uh, uh, it's very uh, straightforward. If I want to then um, explore this data, I just drag and drop an explore node on here. And the explore node could group by something else if I wanted to. I'm going to calculate a bunch of statistics here. And when I run this, I had already run that before, but if I run this, it just runs the uh, functions inside the database, uh, doing all the statistics and such. And then when I'm done, I can view the data and I'm viewing, say, the country, the uh, points, I uh, 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 have a bunch of the, the different regions and so on. So I can visualize the data. Down here, I've done some transformations where I've actually binned the points variable into greater than 90 points, less than 90 points. Okay. And then now what I've done here is I've done something, and I'll repeat, show you how to do that, how to do this with the notebooks as well. Now I've done uh, build me a model that says what are the variables that are most correlated, most associated with points bin, and of course, price the first one, of course, because it's directly correlated. But I should I can remove that and rerun it. But these are the other uh, variables that are most correlated with it. I can then build a number of different models, which is fairly straightforward. There are defaults for doing all this. When I do it, it's going to launch four different models. It's going to have a certain amount of uh, sampling or stratified sampling. I have a certain amount of handling of uh, data, whether or not it's uh, numerical or categorical. And later on, I'm going to come back with this. Um, and took it out, I guess I took it out of this particular one. Description, which is, which is a bunch of unstructured data. When I build my models, I can compare the accuracy of several different models using various different measures, including I always like to show the lift chart for looking for greater than 90 points. And at the end, I know I'm going quickly, but at the end, I can take a new set of uh, data. I can apply these models, which, by the way, when I did this, I did a 60-40 split, and a lot of a lot of machinery happens under the hood that in the notebooks, uh, you have to you have to kind of declare all that, but we have templates that you can use. And at the very end, I have my predictions. And here are my predictions of it likely to be a greater than 90 point wine. And I can sort this descending. I'm just working with tables and 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 uh, uh, views inside the database. You can see all the different 130,000 uh, wines that I've scored now. And David's going to come back in and use all this information to uh, to try and find a good bottle of wine for for not so expensive. So that's a quick tour, a very quick tour of using the uh, using the Oracle Data Miner graphical user interface. I'll just show this again. That's where I did the binning. That's the attribute importance that I showed. This is the lip chart, and we didn't quite show the decision tree, but it's another sort of the way of viewing the models of a certain type of model. There are my predictions, 90% probability of it being 90 points and above, uh, but we don't want to spend too much money. I don't where the, there's the price of $60. I don't want to spend $60. I want to find something for less expensive than that. So now we're going to switch over. We're going to repeat everything I just showed you using the Oracle machine learning notebooks. Now the Oracle machine learning notebooks come with the Oracle autonomous database. So if I go over to see if I can get the right window over here. Um, if I go down to here, I'm in the Oracle autonomous uh, database. I can just log into the cloud. Now I've already done some of the stuff before, so I'm going to kind of save a little bit of time here. I have my notebooks. I've gone into here. I have a service console and I have uh, Oracle machine learning notebooks. There's some setup things that are kind of glossing over here. And I have my, my notebooks here. And the notebook I'm using is this one right here, which I think I already had uh, had open somewhere in one of these other windows. So it launches a uh, launches the notebook here. And then um, these are templates that come with. Uh, there are temp there are a number of gallery. Uh, there's, in the gallery, there's a number of different uh, example notebooks. They're very straightforward to use. And what I've done is repurposed one of those 
and changed a few things around and said, I'm going to use not the demo data that comes with the product, but I'm going to use the data uh, for this for this wine scenario. So I'm going to go through this um, and to save a little bit of time. I've got a bunch of screenshots here already prepared for you. So we'll just see if we can't move it along a little bit more quickly this way. So I'm trying to find a good bottle of wine to bring to the party because I don't want to spend too much money, but I want it to look like a good bottle of wine. Like I said, it's a, it's Grenache from the south of Spain and so on and has a distinctive label and I only spent $13 or something for it. Who knows? Uh, so what I want to do is I want to look at in the notebooks, I can say percent SQL or percent PL SQL. Today, in the very near future, we'll also, you'll also be able to say percent Python and you'll use the Python uh, uh, syntax to access these, uh, these uh, algorithms. Uh, and so what I've done, the same that I did in the, in the Oracle drag and drop GUI, is I've defined my business problem as my target attribute is points thin. So I have less than 90 points and greater than 90 points. All the other variables here are, in fact, uh, input variables. So price, province, region, taster's name, and so on. And remind me to, I'll have to remember to come back and show the unstructured data at the end, because that makes it a little bit more complicated from a, from a notebook point of view, because we have to write a little bit more code to make it happen. Um, but it's very interesting because I can also mine the unstructured data. I can now view the data, uh, display the count of wines by country. So I can just do SQL select count by country and display this. The United States has most of the wines. Uh, here's a few wines. David tells me they're very good out of Australia. Um, and so I can visualize the data. As I move into my machine learning problem statement, uh, I have to kind of pivot the, the, the data a little bit here and say, well, uh, what I'm really looking for are these greater than 90 point lines. I've made this arbitrary cut point here that says, if it's 90 points or above, that's what I'm looking for. I don't care about these other bottles of wine. And so I want to visualize it, emphasize that's what we're going to look for. And uh, I can look at the data in a variety of different ways. Here's the uh, price of the wines. Notice I go to the far uh, right and I'm spending a lot more money down at 115, 135 dollars for a bottle of wine there, but all the wine that's the, the, the uh, greater than 90 points, those are the lighter colors. The darker color, the less than 90 points, as it's showing in, uh, here on this uh, legend, the cheaper, the, the less expensive, the poorer quality wines are in the darker color here, and they all kind of hug the lower prices. Okay, as I spend more and more and more, I can, I can get a good bottle of wine, but I'm looking for a sleeper. I'm looking for a, a really good bottle of wine that, again, has not necessarily been labeled by wine spectator. So I'm trying to say that the country, the origin, all the descriptors and attributes of this bottle of wine, what's the likelihood that it's going to be a, a pretty good bottle of wine? So that's what it's all about. To go a little further, I can look at the data with all the greater than 90 point well, greater than 90 point wines over on the right, and I can see where all the countries are coming from. There's Australia, so there are some good 90 point wines over there. A lot of uh, light purple ones over here, which I guess are what Portugal it looks like for not so uh, great wines and some really, you know, you can kind of see the distribution. In the Oracle machine learning um, notebooks, you can also do this. Let's see if I can show this a little bit later on because it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. When I come down to here, I guess I kind of uh, uh, um, made this a little bit sort of, uh, sort of clipped that a little bit. There are little drop down menus in here if I get this thing to go the right way. Um, I guess I don't have, I'm not I'm a mess with that right now, but you can have uh, drop down menus to say, well, which country are we talking about? And uh, it's very interactive in that regard. So let me skip over that for the moment. I thought I had that set up. So I think this is um, Australia, this is I think Italy, and this is uh, uh, Spain. So as I go to the drop down menu, you can say just show me all the just you know all the different lines from each of the different countries. Um, going a little bit further, what I want to now do is start doing the machine learning. And if remember I had the um, the points, uh, the uh, the points uh, 75 to 100 as an input variable, I need to remove that. So I'm going to create another wine reviews 130k target table where the where I now I'm using the target field points binned and you won't see points. So I want to remove the points attribute so as to not interfere with the points bin target attribute. Otherwise we get sort of circular prediction. I want to view the results. I see there's my data. There is no there is no uh, points. Just points bin. There's the price and there's the other information that's in here. As I go forward with the in in the GUI as you saw it's very straightforward. Click click drag drag and off you go. Under every good GUI, there's a bunch of, uh, there's a lot of code. And the code that, that we're doing there, I'm showing here explicitly. Um, again, there are templates. I've just repurposed some other templates that we've uh, put out there, and it's very straightforward. So I want to drop any previous model settings. I want to drop any previous predictive models that I've created. I want to create the new uh, model settings. In this case, I'm doing an attribute importance first. 
just to figure out what are those key attributes. And this, all, this is all I do when I build a model. You'll see this gets quite repetitive after a while. I want to begin DBMS data mining create model. The type of model I'm going to build is an attribute importance model. That's the target field, that's the ID, that's the point spin, and there's the settings table, which I just took all the defaults uh, from before. I run the model, it runs, took 10 seconds to run it, as you can see right there, and when I'm done, I can view the results in either a pie chart or in this case, the bar chart, and it shows me those attributes that are most influential on uh, determining whether or not the bottle of wine is a good bottle or, or not so great bottle of wine. Now I want to continue on and I want to build some um, predictive models. I'm going to start with the easiest and the simplest one to explain the naive phase algorithm. Uh, we have, I think, seven or eight classification techniques. I'm going to start with the naive phase. Later on, I'm going to build a random forest. Uh, but here I, I drop the previous build settings, drop the previous model, drop the apply result, drop the lift result. I split the data into a 60-40 split for training and testing. Now, as you remember, in the GUI, I don't have to do that. The GUI does all this automatically for you. And in the very near future, we're going to have a a code-free kind of GUI that comes with the autonomous database that we're calling the Oracle Auto ML uh, user interface that'll do auto ML algorithms on the inside as well that will also do a lot of automation. So this is, you know, what happens under the hood and you can do either. You'll, you'll be able to use the GUI or you'll be able to write the code. And as, I, as I've said here, I've, I've used some template code that we've put out there and I've just sort of repurposed it. So now I've changed my decision, I've, I've created a uh, uh, decision tree model settings, so I want to use the uh, um, naive phase algorithm. I'm doing auto data preparation on for the wine data. I want to actually build the model. Again, it looks very similar. Create model, uh, create table, wine settings, uh, define the build, call DBMS data mining, create model, classification, uh, wine build settings, which is pointing back to the uh, naive phase algorithm that I had uh, before. Here's where I do my test. So after a while, once you get familiar with this, you say, hopefully you're saying, this doesn't look so hard. I, I think I don't have to send all my data out of the database to have some sort of, you know, data scientist do all the math in, in Python or R. Um, maybe I can just do it all inside the database, and that's the idea. We, we're trying, they can use Python or R languages, and you can work with teams of people, but I think more and more Oracle data professionals can now do the exact same thing here. So I've done this. I've built this model inside the database on 130,000 records. It took 28 seconds. I've then decided to continue on and do a random forest and the random forest took a little bit longer to run the random forest, a little bit more going on there, but still just minutes or seconds to do all this. And the end, I, there, there's a variety of different ways I could review the model's accuracy, but I just want to show at a very high, simple level, it's got a good lift, right? It's got a good curvature here, which means it's the incremental gain over the naive guess. So that's, that's pretty good. So we're going to say, well, now we've got a good model. What do we do next? Well, let's apply the model and see if we can find that good bottle of wine here. So I'm going to take this so far, and I'm going to hand it over to David, who's got, a, I think, a, a better tool for visualizing the data and searching through this. But now I've said select from the wine apply result where the prediction probability is either greater than 90 points or less than 90 points. So here are all those wines. Here are the probabilities. I can sort those. Now I'm doing the same thing where I'm adding in some other variables like price, province, region, country, cost, probability. And here's the description. I just want to briefly come back and show you what we can do there. Um, so once I've done that, I can leave all of my wine data, like this query I've done here, where I said, just show me all the wines that are less than $15 and have a certain probability of, of being, you know, show me the probability of them being a good or a bad wine. And I can see a bunch of different wines in here. Somewhere in here I see uh, uh, Australia has a bunch of different wines from different regions. And I'm going to turn this over to, to David in a second here to, to say, well, let's take this a little bit further using uh, Oracle Application Express. But at this stage, I, I think I've done a lot of uh, good here. I, I, it, I'm getting thirsty to have a glass of wine. But remember, I said I wanted to show you how we can also do the text. So I want to come back and show you that. So here is a set of data. we we'll are also use the reviews data. So if I look at this, you can do this by the text or not. But here's the caramelized oak and vanilla aromas. Uh, blah, 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 and it has uh, a lot of text here. The, 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 this feels a bit choppy and astringent tannins, herbal, salty, plum flavors, blah, blah, blah. Well, I know how, to, my algorithms know how to how to deal with this, right? So I've also done the bidding where I've transformed the, the points into low, medium, or high, and here I've done some models, but notice what I've done here. I've just said it's text. Now you can do the same thing through the notebooks. I've got another notebook that I want a time to show you that, that does that, and under the hood, 
it uses different languages, it uses Oracle text under the hood, and it does uh, something called term frequency and verse document frequency to deal with all that. And then when I get my model, the easiest one to show is the support vector machine. And if I show, uh, let's say, filter based on just, I think it's description here, I can see those lines that are most associated. I think my target value of one, I think is a good bottle of wine. I think it's the way I have this set up. And I can see the query of just those wines um, that predict, uh, so soft, light, simple, easy, fair, straightforward, bitter, but these um, are the variables to either say, you can do this by absolute value as well here, and uh, I can just query this and see what are the variables that show the most strongly uh, correlations of um, being positive or negative uh, 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 towards, uh, I should have labeled this a little bit better because I'm kind of forgetting whether that's uh, the two is the good wine or the bad wine here. Um, so that uh, those are the variables, and basically I'm taking the unstructured data as well. So elegant, complex years. These look like the uh, what I'm really looking for for my for my. Uh, if you if you like the kind of deep uh, dark red wines that I like, I think most people like. So I can also do unstructured data. Here's what I wanted to show, and with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up and get ready to turn it over to to David. Uh, but what I've done now is create this table for David that says let's look further to find some good wines that are greater than 90 points and they're inexpensive wines. So I have my points prediction, my probability, and a bunch of other different information. And this is a good starting point for, let's say, taking it further over an application express. Um, David? Okay, thank you, Charlie. Actually, this is Dan McGann here. David was feeling a little under the weather after having had too much wine preparing for this demo. So I'll go ahead and step in for him. So I'm logged into my Oracle Cloud account here, and as you can see, this is a free tier account. If you're not familiar with Oracle's free tier, just point your browser to cloud, actually, just go to oracle.com slash cloud slash free, where you can learn all about it. It's actually the best free tier out there, in my opinion. And it includes, under databases, you get two different databases. It can be autonomous transaction processing or data warehouse. Each comes with one OCPU and 20 gigs of storage. So quite a generous offering there for free. And that's where I'm going to navigate now. So I'm just going to open up the navigation. And here I'm going to drill in on the autonomous data warehouse. As you can see, I have the machine learning demo database running here. I'll drill into that. So here I'm going to see some information about the database, but what I really want to show you is under tools here. You've already seen a demo of some of the machine learning, the notebook stuff. What I'm going to focus on is another feature of the service, which is Oracle Application Express. If you're not familiar with Apex, this is a low-code development platform, meaning that you can easily create applications and maintain applications in just a fraction of the time that it would take with a more traditional or lower level programming language such as .NET, JavaScript, Java, take your pick. All right, so what we'll do is launch Application Express, and I'm prompted to log into my workspace. You can think of a workspace as a logical container for developers as well as the applications that the developers are working on, and a workspace is going to have mappings to underlying database schemas. get logged in here. And once you're logged into the workspace, you'll see that there are a number of components here. The application builder and the SQL workshop are where you'll probably spend the majority of your time. The application builder is where you will create and maintain applications. And the SQL workshop is kind of like an online version of SQL developer. It's just a, a tool for you to get at and work with the underlying database using your browser. We'll drill into this first, and I'm going to use the object browser, which is focused on tables here, to show you the underlying tables in this wine schema here. As you can see, there are a number of tables that the data mining processes were creating. But down below here, you'll see the wine reviews table. This is the original table that Charlie was using to develop the models and the predictions that you saw a moment ago. And this is the wine predictions table that he created for me. And as you can see, you have a number of different columns we can work with. Uh, you can see their data types. Of course, we can click the data tab to access the actual data 
within the table, the two most important columns here are prediction and probability over here on the right. Now the prediction column is going to have one of two values. It's either greater than 90 points or it's going to be less than 90 points. And the probability is just an indicator as to how certain we are about the prediction value. So this is the table that I'm going to use as sort of the base of an application that I want to create. To do that, I'm going to navigate over to the other part of an Apex workspace, the application builder. Now currently, I don't have any applications in this workspace. If I did, you'd see them listed below. So I'll go ahead and use create to create a new application. And this will be a new application based on an existing table. So we'll select this first option, and I will call this wine predictions because I'm not feeling super creative right now. As you can see below, you're going to get a, a home page by default and it's going to be a blank page to start. But this is typically a page where you might make it a dashboard or something like that. Add lots of charts or different important data points to it. I'm going to add a second page here. And as you can see, there are a number of different types of pages you can add. I'm going to choose the interactive report, which is a very powerful type of report. I'll select that and we'll call this predictions. And the table I'm going to build this on is that underlying predictions table. So here's that. Click add page. So now we have two pages. There are a number of features that I can enable very easily when creating an application, but I'm going to leave this really bare bones and just go ahead and create the application. So once that's done, we'll be redirected. We're still in the App Builder, but now we're at the Applications homepage. This is our newly created app, and below here we see the pages within our application. Up here there's a button. Now if I click this, it'll open up a new tab. The tab that we're currently looking at inside the App Builder this is for developers, but for end users, what they see is what we see when I click Run Application. As you can see, the applications come with authentication enabled by default. But later, I'm going to want to share this application with all of you. I'm going to give you a URL that you can use to access this application. So I want to disable authentication to make that a little bit easier for you. For that, I'm going to come into the Shared Components into authentication schemes and I'm going to create a new one and I will base the new one off a scheme in the gallery. Here you'll see that there are a number of options that you can choose from including social sign and you could use Facebook or Google or any identity provider to handle the authentication for your app but I'm going to call it no auth and select the option that says no authentication. So we'll create that, and when it creates it, it also makes it current at the same time. So if I rerun this application, if we go back to the application's home page, click that same button, now we come straight through to the home page, which as you can see, I mentioned before, it's somewhat bare bones right now, but we might make that a dashboard page. I'll just use the navigation menu on the left to navigate to the predictions page, and this is where we find that interactive report page, that really powerful report. The idea with an interactive report is to expose as much data to the end user as possible and then let them slice and dice the data as they see fit or for their needs. So the first thing that I notice when I run this is that the probability value does not look right. This is a, a rounding error actually. So we'll go ahead and fix that. For that I'm going to go back to the other tab where I see my pages below and I'm looking at the predictions page. So I'll drill in on that. And over here on the left I can see the various components on the page. Here's that report region. This is the interactive report region. And what I'll do is open up the columns here, go down to probability, and now on the right if I scroll down you'll see the format mask. And if you're familiar with Oracle format masks you could just type one in here. And if you're not just use the menu here to select one that meets your needs. So this one here has some decimal places. I'll go ahead and include or use that one. So I'll save that change. And now I'm going to click Run. So this is how Apex development typically works. You're making a change here in the builder, and then you're running the page to see how it looks, how an end user is going to see that 
and now this probability value looks a bit more useful. So let's uh, see the kinds of things that an end user might do. So the first thing they would probably do if they're looking for a good cheap bottle of wine is click on the prediction column here. As you can see, it'll display the distinct values in the column, and there's two. I'm not so much concerned with uh, any wines that are less than 90 points, so we'll just select the greater than 90 points value. And as you can see, it adds a filter to the report that can be toggled on or off, uh, or you can get rid of it entirely. So now we're looking at the good wines, and I'll probably want to make sure that uh, we're, we're at least relatively sure that these are good wines, so I'll sort descending uh, by probability. And so now we see uh, the wines that we're really sure they're 90 points or above. The problem is that now I'm looking at really expensive wines, and of course that's not what I am after. So I showed you a moment ago that you can click on a column, and then you can go ahead and add a filter by clicking on a distinct value. Another way you can add a filter is by going through the Actions menu. But as you'll see here, there are all kinds of options that are exposed to your end users. So under Data, they can sort and do aggregates. Under Format, Control Breaks and Highlights. They can make a chart, do group buys, and even pivots. These are very powerful reports, but all I need to do here is a simple filter. So I'll select that option, and Price is correct. That's the column I'm after. I'm going to say if price is less than or equal to, and my target value will be $40. So once I apply that, that's all it takes. We can see these wines, and they're properly sorted. So if I were going to a different uh, wine website online, these are probably the, the wines I would start to, to look for. If you were curious about which, let's say, countries were producing the best cheap wines, you could use this interactive report to get at that, but sometimes it's just easier as developers for us to create something sort of prepackaged, if you will, and give that to our end users. And we can do that in this case in the form of a, of a chart. So I'll create another chart page. And rather than go back to this tab directly, I'm just going to navigate this time using the developer toolbar down here at the bottom. So I'm going to go back to the application homepage, and I'm going to select Create Page. And this time I'm going to create a chart page. And as you can see, there's lots of different charts that you can choose from. I'll go with a pie chart, and I'm going to call this Top Countries. We'll add a breadcrumb, and I'll add a navigation menu, entry, and then finally, I will select that same target page for this chart. That's the wine predictions. And here we're saying or specifying the type of aggregate that we want to do. So what, what I want to display is the country. And really what I want to do is count the number of times we see or, or that country is in the table. So I'm just going to select count. We'll go ahead and create that. And now I'm at that page, and I can just run it. And here's our chart. Not very difficult. Uh, the only problem right now, if I hover over US, you'll see that we're looking at 82,000 rows. That's really the, the, the reason we're seeing so many rows is we're looking at the complete data set. And if we look at predictions, we've added two filters here. So we're looking at prediction is greater than 90 points and price is less than or equal to 40. We can do the same thing to the chart. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have 82,000 rows now. But I'll go to edit the page using this link here. And over here on the left, you see the chart region. The way I get at the data is through the series. So I'll select a series. And there's this optional where clause I can specify here. So if you're familiar with creating a, a where clause, just imagine the word where is already there. So we're going to say prediction is greater than 90 points. And then I'll say and uh, price is less than or equal to 40. So if I save that, and rerun the page, hover over US. Now we're down to about 30,000 rows. So this is the same data set, although it, the, the data didn't look much different. At least we're looking at the correct values now. And I'll just make one last change so it looks a bit more organized. Down here, there's the order by. And I just happen to know that Apex is creating a, a group by query, the first column in the query being the country and then the second one, the value. So I'm targeting the value column. And if I save that and run it, now 
it's going from least to greatest. And the most important thing is how obvious it is that it's really the U.S. that's just leading the way when it comes to good, cheap wines. Don't you forget it. All right, I mentioned earlier, what we really want to do here is create an application that we can then share with our end users. And the way we do that with Apex is simply by giving them the URL. And I'm going to copy this URL out of here. As you can see, I'm copying it up to the point of the first number after P equals. This is our application's ID. So we'll just copy that. And then I'm going to go to bit, bitly.com where I can create a shortened version of this long URL. So here's the short URL it gave me. It's a little cryptic. I don't know if that's an O or a zero or an L or an I. So I'm just going to customize this. We'll call it, let's see, Wine 2020. Oh, let's try Apex-Wine-2020. Sorry, it's a little bit longer, but that one did save. So at this point, if you point your browser to apex, or I'm sorry, bit.ly slash apex-wine-2020, then you'll be redirected to the application that I'm working with in the runtime view. And you should come right through without having to authenticate. Now, for those of you that are not going to take out a mobile device and, and go check it out, I'll just show you what it would look like. This is pretty cool. So you're seeing the desktop view now, but Apex is a responsive application builder. So I'll open up my developer tools where I can toggle the view and see things like they would appear in this example on an iPhone 6, 7, or 8. We have the, the pixel sizes here, and I'm viewing them at 100%. So I can toggle this so that we're looking at it like a normal phone. And as you can see, the, the chart region displays just fine. It's quite usable. Navigation is tucked away unless they choose to expose it. I can navigate to predictions. Maybe for this type of report, they turn the phone to view it with a bit more data going across the, the sides. But we can scroll through it and even uh, scroll through the columns just fine on a mobile device. Hopefully you'll agree that Apex makes it very easy to create these types of web-based applications. And again, if anybody wants to give the app a try, please feel free to navigate to that page and take a look at some, some good wine. Filter it down via your parameters and, and have some fun. So at the end of all this, if you've done all the part that I've just shown you for the machine learning, at the, at the end of this, you know, Congratulations, you're essentially a, you know, an Oracle data scientist now. You've done all of your data preparation, all of the Oracle data skills that you're familiar with, but it, with a little bit of additional uh, sort of learning and training, you've evolved your skills and you're becoming uh, more of a data scientist. So Oracle tries to make that very straightforward for you. So as a data professional, you can extract much more value out of your data and combined with uh, Application Express and different uh, other Oracle platforms, it's, very, uh, it's a very good way for you to build and deploy and operationalize models and disseminate your insights and predictions throughout the enterprise, and as we've shown with this very simple and fun example. For more information on Oracle machine learning, you can go to uh, just Google us and find us out on the, uh, on the uh, internet, just Google Oracle machine learning. Um, I also do like to show the Analytics and Data Summit. It's an event that will be happening uh, in February, so as you watch this, it may have already happened, but the presentations are still out there, and we're going to have another event March 14, 15 next year. But if you can't make that actual physical event, uh, please join us for our TechCast. If you go to the top over here or, or watch the thing, click on the YouTubes and such. We, we, every two weeks we have a, uh, a TechCast, and we record those, and those are available for you to, uh, well, one, you could present. If you, if you have something to share with others, please, that's the idea of it all. But if you want, you can also watch what we've done previously. Now, at this point, I guess we should ask Dave and I, we'll, we'll take any questions. Thank you very much.
Hello, um, this is Charlie Berger and Dan McGann, and we are here to answer any additional questions that you uh, have submitted. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, and uh, please type in your questions. We'll take, uh, we've answered a few of them, but we'll keep in watch for uh, more questions. Uh, somebody says this is the best excuse for uh, day drinking. Uh, yes, uh, whatever, however you, you uh, this helps you, uh, you know, you, you use the wine for research only, uh, but uh, it, it's a lot of fun. There is another um, version of this. Apologize, apologies for the dog. I'm sure many of you have the same situation these days. Um, there is another version of the notebooks that I think I mentioned that includes the text mining for the unstructured data. And I think I showed that through the GUI, which puts bumper pads on all the mechanisms we use to have a stop words list and a thesaurus and all the kind of uh, lexer and all the kind of mechanics you do under the hood uh, inside the database. Um, in the notebooks today, you would have to do that. And there's a, there's a wine version. I think we have it out on GitHub that says including text. And then I'll show you how to do that. Um, somebody here, Abene says, great session. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ansel says, what is the cost associated with the application? You know, Ansel, I got the best news ever for you. You, you will send us bottles of wine after this. It's free. Uh, Oracle Machine Learning, uh, as of December, I think, 6th or 9th, um, Oracle, Larry Ellison and company made the decision that both the spatial and graph option that was a previously priced kind of techno niche kind of option for very specific purposes and very popular, but, uh, but a little bit sort of... Um, uh, you know, special purpose in the Oracle machine learning. Again, a little bit of a, you know, special niche kind of, you know, not everybody does neural networks and such. So the decision was we should not have these things priced options. Let's just make them available for everyone so they get used so much more. And we've just opened the floodgates on those. So um, every Oracle database enterprise edition uh, and every autonomous database includes everything that we're showing. And of course, they've always include, included Oracle Apex. And I think the two of them you know, go very well together. Um, could you share the notebooks with us? If you go to GitHub, I will try to find that and share those notebooks uh, here. So hang on for that one. The next one says, is there an Oracle data scientist certification we can work towards? There actually is something we are working on uh, with Oracle University. It's, it's, uh, it's coming along. Um, there is a blog series that is kind of, a, you know, the, the, the Monarch Notes version of that. If you Google uh, Oracle machine learning blog, um, you will see a month, about a month or so ago, uh, there's the first in, uh, instance of that blog series that talks about things. And there are other ON24 presentations and demos that go into much greater detail about how to become a data scientist. So there's a lot of materials that you can sort of teach yourself today, but there is also an actual course uh, coming together with certification from Oracle um, uh, University. The, let me see if I can get the GitHub uh, link for everything so people can get access to that. There are, I just saw another notebook uh, session here. So here is the, uh, where's the GitHub question? What is the, so, Dan, Dan, do you see any questions you might want to answer while I try to uh, sift through this? Sure, I can grab one. There's one in here that says, does Oracle ML provide REST APIs to get predictions using the trained model? I can't answer specifically about Oracle yes. ML, although I wouldn't. Oh, yeah. it does. Dan, wow. well, Dan, we just use your we just use your stuff. So the model. Oh, I was going to uh, say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just use your stuff. So the models exist as a SQL function, and there's a thing in. I thought it was in this version uh, that we had done before, but uh, certainly Brendan Tierney, who's a, a great expert in this field, has written books. He and I, if you Google Oracle, if you Google on, um, I'll try to find it, but we have a, um, uh, um, uh, a YouTube that shows how to do that. Well, I will endeavor to find that and, uh, and add that as a, as a thing in here as well. Any other questions? Question here is, Apex a competitor to which technology is currently in the market? As a low-code development platform, you'd have to, uh, you know, just Google that particular keyword, low-code, to find out what some of the competitors are in that space. But, oh uh, yeah, none of them are included with your Oracle database license, so Apex has a leg up there already. 
Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, if you look at the combination of what uh, Dan's product and, and my product uh, do these days, I think it's just absolutely um, amazing. Um, there are, you, wow, there's a lot of questions here. Um, I may not be, wow, there's a lot of questions here. Uh, I may not be able to answer all these things with um, copy and paste and, and such, but here's the REST services one um, with how to do that, so I'll just answer that now. Uh, but if you think about it, the, the Oracle database, especially the autonomous database now, is is always free, right? So it's like, um, you know, Google Drive has always been free. Well, now you can store your important uh, or not so important, you know, data, just data about lines, whatever you want, in these databases. And you can unleash the power of all these algorithms to find patterns and relationships amongst things, clustering, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, all these kind of things. And so, so my sort of, you know, science fiction view of the future, the very near future, like next week, is that you build a predictive model for what my checking account balance is, my savings account balance, my marital status, my number of kids, um, you know, everything uh, um, out there. And you go to, to Dan's uh, Oracle Application Express and you view all those predictions and you say, here's the customer's uh, checking account balance, but here is their predicted checking account balance. Charlie, I predict you should have $40 million. Um, maybe you, you're making trips to the Cayman Islands and you keep your money down there. And there's no reason that you cannot make your data work so much more. And Oracle Application Express is free. It's a great, easy to use thing um, and the machine learning is free so together you can you, you can do so much build out you know build predictive applications Dan, you want to add if you want to add in anything um, go for it I'm just sifting through the questions yeah same here I'm actually sifting through the video on the rest um, API yeah. stuff there there is one um, that says how would this model behave when there are millions of rows millions of rows is what you know we often I mean millions or you know billions of rows it, it leverages the parallelism of the database. So um, uh, I'm spelling database wrong here only because I'm trying to type quickly. So they are not, you're not running R, you're not running Python, you're not running some, you know, what I would say legacy type of uh, architecture algorithm. We've taught the database how to do math. Um, so after 40 years, we sent it off to school to get a few PhDs and patents on how to implement machine learning techniques, the simplest uh, and first algorithm that we put inside the database was something called um, a naive Bayes because it just is based on counting principles. And way back uh, more than 10 years ago, that was the very first, uh, one of the first algorithms we put in. And since then, we've added, uh, we've extend, you know, we've added in um, parallel, you know, recursive partitioning within a parallel infrastructure for doing decision trees. And uh, we have XGBoost that was just added in the 20C release. So it, it, they are all leveraging. The idea is move the algorithms, not the data. Um, Something about R and Python are embedded in the database. Is SAS embedded? No, not SAS. Um, we're partners with SAS, and you can take your data out and move it over to SAS, but now that all the algorithms are free inside the database, you, 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 you know, it, it, you'd have to have, I think, you know, some, some reasons to want to do that. Um, Apex, you just answered that one. Business-wise, are there templates based on business? Yeah. In fact, the, the question uh, that um, somebody has here, um, Jao uh, Sanchez, I guess, is, uh, are there templates? There are hands-on labs that, you know, obviously are working through certain things, but in the autonomous database, if you go to the examples, there's templates for associations, another template for classification or otherwise known as prediction. There's a template for anomaly detection and so on. So if you take a look at those, um, those are, are there. Um, somebody says, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, can we integrate Apex with Kafka you, and Spark? You want to take that one, Dan? Sure. So traditionally, Apex has been targeted, really purpose-built for Oracle Database. However, more recent additions have added support for what we call web source uh, instead, which just works over REST. So as long as you can front-end the Kafka or Spark platforms with uh, REST API, or really any other uh, data source for that matter, it could be uh, SQL Server or some other database, as long as there's some kind of REST API that we can work with, then yeah, you could integrate that into Apex. Although the, the, the target and the best is always going to be Oracle Database. Okay, there's another question here. What kind of support is provided if we have a finely tuned model and we have data that just keeps on coming in? How much manual effort is involved? Actually, it, 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 you know, I don't want to make it sound like it's so, so simple, but it's just rerun the script or rerun the notebook. If you're using the notebooks or using the GUI, 
you can schedule those to run, um, you know, just schedule a job, do whatever you want. If you, underneath any GUI or notebook is really just, you know, code, SQL and PL SQL scripts is what we're doing. Or if you're writing, uh, interfacing through R or Python, R or Python that then is calling the SQL underneath the, the hood. So just if you want to do something that's event, uh, a trigger of an event trigger or just time it every so often, think of it as analogous to just saying I want to update the uh, uh, expense report or the salary uh, or the employee, uh, re, you know, uh, report, whatever. It's just a BI query, except it's a BI query on steroids that, that involve all these algorithms. So any that's the that's the beauty of moving the algorithms to the database. Everything else you know that that is in the database for for solving problems and and automating things and dealing with encryptions and security and privileges. Now the algorithms come in as peers to all the rest of that powerful Oracle functionality. So you can you can do all sorts of cool things just the way you would anything else. Um, I think we're probably running. Uh, there's more questions here. What is the cost associated with this? It's all free. As I said before, um, as of December, they decided to make everything free. And I think we've answered all the questions. So, uh, Dan, do you see any more questions? Nope, I think that's it. All right, guys, thank you very, very much for listening in on this day. Uh, please uh, give it a try. If you have any questions, you can reach out to Dan and myself for our respective uh, areas. And um, good luck, and, and have a glass of wine. Take care. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Take care.